After 10 takes of Leonardo DiCaprio trying various ways to get across the moment of pure joy, including howling like a wolf, James Cameron came up with the line on the spot and relayed it to his actor via walkie-talkie, who proceeded to do it in one take. Originally, Mel Gibson was only interested in directing and he wanted Brad Pitt to play William Wallace and Warner Brothers agreed to finance the film if Gibson signed on to another Lethal Weapon movie, but he declined and in the end, Paramount put up one third of the budget for North American distribution rights and 20th Century Fox put up the other two thirds for international rights and in the end, it made $213 million at the box office, which today adjusted for inflation is $425 million. Sons of Scotland, I am William Wallace. William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, I've heard. Kills men by the hundred. And if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his arse. <laughs> I am William Wallace. And I see a whole army of my countrymen here in defiance of tyranny. You've come to fight as free men. And free men you are. What will you do without freedom? Will you fight? Right? Against that? No! We will run! And we will live. Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live. At least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives but they'll never take our freedom! Clint Eastwood were all considered for the role of Woody until it went to Tom Hanks. Billy Crystal turned down the role of Buzz, thinking the movie wouldn't work, and expressed his regret after doing as such when he saw the film. It went to Tim Allen, who was starring in another Disney production, Home Improvement at the time. To infinity and beyond! I found my moving button. The line was improvised by actor Patrick Reyna, who has embraced the defining line of his career, saying, It just means he did his job well as an actor, and you can't help but be honored and flattered to be a part of so many people's lives. Hey, you want a s'more? S'more what? No, no, you want a s'more. I haven't had anything yet, so how can I have some more of nothing? You're killing me, Smalls. While filming Jerry Maguire, the original Mission Impossible debuted in theaters number one at the box office. Upon returning to work on Monday, the entire cast and crew gave Tom Cruise a standing ovation to which he thanked them and stated he wanted this movie to be his next number one hit. And true to his word, Jerry Maguire debuted at number one at the box office on its way to becoming the fourth highest grossing romantic drama of all time. Jerry! 
Yeah, what, what, what can I do for you, Rod? You just tell me, what can I do for you? It's a very personal, very important thing. Hell, it's a family model. Are you ready, Jerry? I'm ready. I just want to make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. Show you the money. Oh, no, no, you can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it what you would mean it, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I better hear you say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Show you the money. Not, not show you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. Louder. Show me the money. That's it, brother, but you got to yell that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. People. I love black people! Who's your motherfucker, Jerry? You my motherfucker! What you gonna do, Jerry? Show me the money! Uh, congratulations, you're still my agent. An unknown Renee Zellweger beat out Kate Beckinsale, Winona Ryder, Uma Thurman, Marissa Tomei, Cameron Diaz, and Jennifer Lopez for the role of Dorothy. And I'm sure most cinephiles don't remember her performance that won her an Academy Award, but I guarantee you they remember this line. Hello? Hello? I'm looking for my wife. Wait. Okay. 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 This is where it has to happen, and this is where it has to happen. I'm not letting you get rid of me. How about that? This used to be my specialty. You know, I was good in the living room. They send me in there and I do it alone. And now I just... But tonight, our little project, our company, had a very big night. Very, very big night. But it wasn't complete. It wasn't nearly close to being in the same vicinity as complete. Because I couldn't share it with you. I couldn't hear your voice. Or laugh about it with you. I miss my wife. We live in a cynical world. A cynical world. And we work in a business of tough competitors. You complete me. And I just had. Shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. Women fake orgasms. 
This was news to director Rob Reiner, who was incredulous, claiming that had never happened to him before. Yeah, sure, buddy. Keep telling yourself that. This conversation sparked the idea for the scene by actress Meg Ryan, who eventually came up with the iconic punchline as well. So what do you do with these women? You just get up out of bed and leave? Sure. Well, explain to me how you do it. What do you say? Just have an early meeting, early haircut, early squash game. You don't play squash. They don't know that. They just met me. That's disgusting. I know. I feel terrible. You know, I'm so glad I never got involved with you. I just would have ended up being some woman you had to get up out of bed and leave at 3 o'clock in the morning and go clean your and irons. And you don't even have a fireplace. Not that I would know this. Why are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. You are a human affront to all women, and I am a woman. Hey, I don't feel great about this, but I don't hear anyone complaining. Of course not. You're out the door too fast. I think they have an okay time. How do you know? I mean, how do I know I know? Because they... Yes, because they... How do you know that they're really... What are you saying? That they fake orgasm? It's possible. Get out of here. Why? Most women at one time or another have faked it. Well, they haven't faked it with me. How do you know? Because I know. Oh. Right. That's right. I forgot. You're a man. What was that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them, and most women at one time or another have done it, so you do the math. You don't think that I can tell a difference? No. Get out of here. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Are you okay? Oh. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Oh, God. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh. 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 Oh, God. Oh. Yes. 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 Yes! Yes! Ah! Oh! Oh, yes! 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 Oh! Yes! 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 Oh! 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 Oh, God! Oh! I'll have what she's having. Principal photography took over a year with actors falling ill from the long work days and the stress. Even Nicholson himself became so frustrated he refused to learn his lines until minutes before shooting a scene. Hence why this iconic utterance was actually improvised and it was an homage to Ed McMahon's opening for Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Little pig. Little pigs, let me come in. Not by the hair on your chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Johnny! Marlon 
Marlon Brando was a virtual unknown, but after this performance, he catapulted to superstardom and critical acclaim, being nominated four consecutive times for the Academy Award for Best Actor. Hey, Stella! Hey, Stella! Frank Sinatra had a handshake deal to play Terry Malloy, but no contract. So, when he was replaced by Marlon Brando, this did not sit well with old blue eyes. And this movie was director Elia Kazan's answer to anyone who judged him for testifying against eight people in the film industry for being communists. Wow. Okay, Daddy. How much you waste? Huh? When you weighed 168 pounds, you were beautiful. You could have been another Billy Khan. That skunk we got you for the manager, he brought you along too fast. It wasn't him, Charlie, it was you. Remember that night in the garden, you came down my dressing room and said, kid, this ain't your night. We're going for the price on Wilson. You remember that? This ain't your night. My night, I could have taken Wilson apart. So what happens? He gets the title shot outdoors in a ballpark, and what do I get? A one-way ticket to Palookaville. You was my brother, Charlie. You should have looked out for me a little bit. You should have taken care of me just a little bit so I wouldn't have to take them dives for the short end money. Well, I had some bets down for you. You saw some money. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum, which is what I am. Let's face it. Future. Okay. Okay. I tell him I couldn't find you. Tend to one he won't believe. Me. Here. You take this. Needed. Screenwriter Paul Schrader confirmed that Robert De Niro improvised this scene drawing inspiration from the boss Bruce Springsteen who used to say this iconic line on stage at his concerts. Then you saw so you come in, you fucking shit heel. I'm standing here. You make a move. You make a move. It's your move. I'll try it, you. You talking to me? 
You talking to me? You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, yeah? Huh? Okay. Sun Xu, the author of The Art of War, is credited with this quote, even though Al Pacino, as Michael Corleone, made it the most famous. In my father's old study, it's changed. I remember there used to be a, a big desk, was here. I remember when I was a kid, Frankie, we had to be very quiet when we played me here. I was very happy that this house never went to strangers. First Clemenza took it over, now you. My father taught me many things here. He taught me in this room. He taught me, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Now if Hyman Roth sees that I interceded in this thing, in the Rosado brothers' favor. He's gonna think his relationship with me is still good. Agabit. Agabit. That's what I want him to think. Mario Puzo actually stole this line from a 19th century French author whose 1835 book had the line, in that case, I will make him an offer no one would decline. Oh, Godfather, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Is this how you turn down a Hollywood Pinocchio that uh, cries like a woman? <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? What is that nonsense? Look at you. You spend time with your family? Sure I do. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. You look terrible. I want you to eat. I want you to rest well, and a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. Too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Now, just go outside, enjoy yourself, and uh, forget about all this nonsense. Listen, I want you to leave all to me. The movie made $418 million at the box office against a $1.5 million budget. When it was first released on DVD in 1994, it sold 24 million copies in a year, generating an additional $430 million in revenue. Between the box office and the home video, Snow White has generated $1.1 billion. <laughs>
magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Famed is thy beauty, majesty, but hold, a lovely maid I see. Rags cannot hide her gentle grace. Alas, she is more fair than thee. Alas for her. Reveal her name. Lips red as the rose, hair black as ebony, skin white as snow. Snow White. Author Ian Fleming used to work with British naval intelligence, and that's where he drew the inspiration for James Bond. And he was an avid bird watcher, and one of the most famous bird watchers in the world was a guy by the name of James Bond. So that's why he named the character that, because he had the dude's guidebook. I need another thousand. I admire your courage, Miss uh... Trench. Sylvia Trench. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Mr. Bond, I suppose you wouldn't care to um, raise the limit? I have no objections. The purpose is Madame C. Illegal. Now. Says Phoebe. Like to get me. All of James Bond's personal tastes are that of its creator, Ian Fleming. He loved to golf, he loved scrambled eggs, he had an affinity for gambling, and guess what? The guy enjoyed a martini from time to time. Miley, can I do something for you, Mr. Bond? Uh, just a drink. A martini, shaken, not stirred. Well, won't you join me? Not on duty. I'm Mr. Goldfinger's personal pilot. You are? And uh, just how personal is that? I'm a damn good pilot. Period. Well, that's good news. Uh, by the way, where is our host? He flew on ahead. Thank you. The entire movie is a metaphor for chasing one's dreams no matter how bizarre. The same logic is used by lotteries as a device to get people to play, like slogans such as, if you don't play, you can't be a winner. This scene didn't work, but the day of, Tom Hanks amped it up, leaning into showing the differences between the cultures, trying to elicit the disconnect between the manager and his players. Say, Evelyn, can I ask you a question? You got a moment? Yeah. Which team do you play for? Well, I, I'm a peach. Well, I was just wondering, because I couldn't figure out why you would throw home when we've got a two-run lead. You let the tying run get on second, and we lost the lead because of you. Now you start using your head. That's not love that's three feet above your ass. <laughs> Are you crying? No. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Why don't you leave her alone, Jimmy? Oh, you zip it, Doris. Rogers Hornsby was my manager, and he called me a talking pile of pig shit. And that was when my parents drove all the way down from Michigan to see me play the game. And did I cry? No, no. No, no. And you know why? No. Because there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball. No crying. What's the matter, Jimmy? She's crying, sir. I didn't mean to do that. Perhaps you chastise her too vehemently. Good rule of thumb. Treat each of these girls as you would treat your mother. 
You ever tell you look like a penis with a little hat on? You're out of here! Oh, no, right no, no, now, no, Jimmy, you, I heard you that! Misunderstood. <laughs> Damn, you misunderstood me! No, you can't throw me out for that! No one, you got a strike! Oh, the guy, no, the guy, no, the guy. Aaron Sorkin was inspired to write the play after a phone conversation with his sister who was studying law at Boston University and heading down to Guantanamo Bay to investigate a case similar to the one depicted in the movie. He wrote the play on cocktail napkins at a Broadway theater that he bartended at. You snotty little bastard. Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. If Lieutenant Kendrick gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, then why did he have to be transferred? Colonel, Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do. Object! And when you went bad, you cut cousins. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had Marcus inside a bony transfer. Your Honor, you doctored the logbook. Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor. Consider Not yourself in contempt. contempt. Colonel Jessup! Did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago, and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! The movie was based upon an imaginary friend that Spielberg had as a kid that he revisited as an adult while on the set of Raiders of the Lost Ark due to his loneliness from being away from his friends and family. You know, you should give him his dignity. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. Phone? He said phone? He said phone? Can't you understand English? He said phone. Home? Oh. You're right. That's E.T.'s home. Home? E.T. Home phone. E.T. phone home. Mm. E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home. Who wants to call somebody? Mm. <laughs> What's all this shit? E.T. phone home. Oh my God, he's talking now. Oh. E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home. Writers wrote Tom Hanks's part with Kevin Costner in mind, but Ron Howard didn't even consider the actor. John Travolta, John Cusack, and Brad Pitt were all considered for roles in the film, and the actors were actually trained by NASA in Houston by real-life astronauts from the Apollo 15 mission. Uh, we got a couple of housekeeping procedures for you. We'd like you to roll right to zero, six, zero, and know your rates. Roger that. Rolling right, zero, six, zero.
And then if you could uh, give your oxygen tanks a stir. Roger that. Stir the tanks. Whoa. Hey. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Andy Circus based his voice for Gollum off the sounds that his cats made while coughing up fur balls, and he shot his final scene for the trilogy literally weeks before The Return of the King came out in the living room of Peter Jackson's house. It's mine. My own. My precious. Precious? It's been called that before, but not by you. Gandalf told me you were one of the river folk. He said your life was a sad story. You are not so very different from a hobbit once. Were you? Smeagol. And for two and a half thousand years, the ring passed out of all knowledge. Until, when chance came, it ensnared a new bearer. <laughs> Gollum, who took it deep into the tunnels of the misty mountains, and there it consumed him. The ring brought to Gollum unnatural long life. For 500 years it poisoned his mind. the wind's original director who spent two years planning and developing the film was reportedly fired for being openly gay because it caused friction with star clark gable who refused to work with a homosexual you go where shall i go what shall i do frankly my dear i don't give a damn Humphrey Bogart improvised one of the most famous sayings in film history because the original line read, here's good luck to you, kid. But the day of filming, he didn't tell anyone and he changed the line. And as the saying goes, 
The rest is history. We'll always have Paris. We didn't have, we, we lost it until you came to Casablanca. We got it back last night. And I said I would never leave you. And you never will. But I've got a job to do too. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be any part of. Ilza, I'm no good at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. Now, now. He's looking at you, kid. Filming Jaws on the Water made for a troubled production with crew members complaining to producers that the support boats used to carry their equipment to and from the water were too small. Hence, how they got the soon-to-be-famous line and incorporated it into the movie. You heard him? Slow ahead! Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. You're gonna need a bigger boat. James Cameron was working out at the gym before heading home to write the script for Terminator 2 when Tone Loke's song Wild Thing came on and he had the lyric Hasta la Vista Baby and it stuck in Cameron's head so he decided to incorporate it into the script. Hasta la vista, baby. James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger argued over the line with Arnold wanting to say, I'll come back. And then James asked him if he was a writer, to which he responded no. So he said, then don't tell me how to fucking write. I'm a friend of Sierra Connor. I was told that she's here. Could I see her, please? No, can't see her. She's making a statement. Where is she? Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. Life's Like a Box of Chocolates is from a 1987 Japanese novel that inspired this line when it was translated to English in 1989. Despite the Forrest Gump novel being written in 1986, the script wasn't written until 1990. My name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. Do you want a chocolate? I could eat about a million and a half of these. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. The film was so controversial upon its release, it was banned in Northern Ireland, Quebec, Sweden, 
Italy, Czechoslovakia, and even the state of Kansas requested they remove 32 scenes from the film, which was literally half of it. After 10 takes of Leonardo DiCaprio trying various ways to get across the moment of pure joy, including howling like a wolf, James Cameron came up with the line on the spot and relayed it to his actor via walkie-talkie, who proceeded to do it in one take. Whoa! I can see the Statue of Liberty already. Very small, of course. The phrase first appeared in a song from 1823 by John Howard Payne from an opera called Clary, and in the book, the original line was, Take me home to Aunt M. Are you ready now? Yes. Say goodbye, Toto. Yes, I'm ready now. Then close your eyes and tap your heels together three times. And think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. Wake up, honey. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place. Dorothy, Dorothy, dear. It's Aunt Em, darling. Oh, Annie Em. It's you. The dog Toto reportedly earned $125 a week, while each of the actors that played Munchkins earned $50 a week. And oh, by the way, the dog Toto's real name was Terry. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. One of the most misquoted lines in the history of movies. It's not, Luke, I am your father. It's, no, I am your father. But thanks to movies like Tommy Boy and other pop cultural moments, people are quoting this wrong all the time. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. No. No. That's not true. That's impossible. 
the boat. George Lucas was raised in a devout Methodist family and heard the Bible passage from the book of Ruth that states, May the Lord be with you. And that's where he drew the inspiration for the iconic line. And may the force be with you. May the force be with you. Remember, the force will be with you always. The force is with you, young Skywalker. May the force be with you. May the force be with us. May the force be with us. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. The force will be with you always. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Anakin, may the force be with you. May the force be with you, Master. May the force be with us all. Obi-Wan, may the force be with you. Goodbye, old friend. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. And may the force be with us. May the force be with you. May, may the, the force, force be with <laughs> You've got what said it enough. May the force be with you always.